How's it going guys? Zibby here from Zibby Does It. On this episode today we will be building ourselves a DIY uh, barrel uh, static bed moving bed filtration system. So this is based off the world famous Nessus filter. So we're just gonna DIY it, um, save some save some money, uh, have some fun doing it, and uh, so yeah. So in front of me here in the frame, we got these. Uh, these are three 55 gallon drum um, food grade barrels that I picked up. Um, just make sure when you go to purchase any of these barrels that. Uh, <laughs> You check to see what was in them before you buy them to make sure they weren't holding anything toxic or harmful to your fishes or anything like that. So I think we'll do good on these. Uh, these were holding uh, Dutch Brothers coffee. So if anything, my fish will be um, very wide awake. Um, now, but <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll wash these out before I uh, use them. So. Here on the floor is all the bits and pieces of pipe that we're going to need uh, to create this system. So it's going to it's going to have water that comes in with a 3 inch pipe. It'll come through here. This first one will be a static moving bed. It's going to be filled with K1. So these three boxes here are filled with K1. Here, let me show you those really quick. I haven't opened these yet, so let's see what I got. Let's see if they sent me the right stuff. Oh, it's just a big, a big bag. All right, well, basically K1 is kind of like a, it's these little white, looks like water bottle caps, so they're uh, they're just basically there to provide a good uh, living surface for your bacteria. So, anyways, uh, barrel one will get filled with K1. It's a static bed, so the water will just filter through it, and then it'll filter into uh, barrel number two, which is also a static uh, bed. And then the third barrel will be the moving bed. So the water will filter into this guy, and then there will be an air pump in here, um, which will constantly churn uh, the caps, which will provide the proper uh, living conditions for the uh, beneficial bacteria. So, and then it'll come out and then pump back in, well, not pump, but this is gonna be a gravity fed. It'll be pump fed at the beginning, gravity fed into the pond. So, uh, and then the, this will also incorporate a, a system that you can clean out the drums. So I'm actually going to use these, uh, shower, shower drains. So those will be installed in the bottom. Um, I'll use some scrap two by sixes over here to build a stand and, uh, that'll raise these up a little bit so that I can put the shower drains and uh the valves will be i can turn off and on each one to clean out each barrel individually so that should be hopefully i have enough pieces i, I know i'm already missing one one piece uh i need to order one more of these because i miscalculated that i need two for each barrel and i only got five so place one of those on order get that done get her Amazon delivers quick. So speaking of Amazon, um, if you're in the US and I would like a recommendation on an air pump for this guy. So um, the recommendation is to find an air pump that does, I think it's like 25 to 40 liters per hour, if that sounds about right. Um, so Amazon US has some air pumps that range from like 25 bucks all the way up to like almost $300 So I'm kind of on a budget, so I don't really want to spend $300 on an air pump But I also don't want to buy a piece of junk air pump. That's just gonna break after a few months 
So if you guys have any recommendation on a good air pump, I need two of them. I need one, one to run this system, and then I also need one to run my aerator on the bottom drain. So if you guys know any good air pumps that won't bust the bank, please post below in the comments and let me know what you recommend. Um, so yeah, so right now I'm gonna get to building these, so I'm gonna go wash these out, and then uh, we'll start cutting the holes for the uh, the bulkheads so we can connect these together and uh, all right let's do it zippy fast alrighty guys so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to make um, the holes for the uniseals and basically all the way through. So a hole on each side. Um, if your barrels have like little strengthening ridges, uh, make sure you prick those front to back because you don't want to drill through them. These barrels are uniform all the way around, so it doesn't really matter where I drill through. So I'm just going to, got 12 inch ruler. Gonna measure up 12 inches. And actually it looks like I'm gonna use the stripe. So I'm just gonna put a mark right in the center of the stripe. And that's gonna be my center of my hole. And uh, drill them all the way through. All right, let's get her done. Zippy fast. All right, guys, so after you've drilled all of your uh, holes for your uniseals, um, make sure you use like a sanding block and get rid of all the burrs. And then you can uh, go ahead and insert your uniseal and make sure it's in snugly all the way. And there you have it. All right, see you in the next clip. All right, so I got the uh, uniseals in on the barrels. So now my next uh, job here is I am going to get the uh, shower drain mounted in the base for the drainage system. So in order to do that though, I need to build a stand for these to sit on because this will be coming out the bottom of the barrel. So it won't be able to stand by itself. So I just have some leftover 2x6s. Um, I'm going to use those and just build a uh, stand so that I can set the uh, barrel on these stands and have enough room and then I'll get the exact height measured because I'll have to drill a hole through the wood to have the, uh, the pipe come through for the drainage. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna screw these bases together. I'm gonna to drill a hole in the bottom um, for the drainage, and then drill a hole through the wood to get the uh, uh, drainage pipes out. And uh, that'll be my next step. All right, see you back. All right, guys, so I drilled my uh, three and a half inch diameter hole in the bottom. I screwed on my shower drain. So the shower drain was one of these guys. It's just a uh, PVC shower drain, just like that. Um, connects to a two inch uh, PVC pipe. So since I'm going to transition these to one and a half pipe, I then am connecting a uh, two inch to one and a half inch uh, uh, reducer. And then I put in a, uh, just like a little inch and a half inch, inch and a half, one and a half inch pipe in between to connect my 90 to the reducer. So this is what's going to be under here. 
and then I'll drill a hole through here to have a pipe come out and then I'll connect the rest of the uh, waste plumbing so now what I want to do before I do that is I want to uh, I want to make all the barrel connectors um, and then probably the air lines before I connect all this together because once you get that all connected together it's going to be harder maneuvering the barrel so I want to get the internal stuff in the barrels finished first before I connect all that so my next task is to making the barrel connectors so I'm using about a four inch piece of three inch pipe so I've just cut it four inches and then I round it off about a 45 degree angle on both sides so then I'm going to take some uh, liquid soap um, I'm going to put the liquid soap on the rim and then you shove that into there and get that placed in so you'll do that on all the connectors of the barrel so that's what I'm going to do next I'm going to get these inserted into all the barrels so let me get get that done all right guys so at this point i'm just kind of showing you kind of what it's going to look like um this is just all dry fitted so i haven't solvent welded any of these things together so you'll have your uh barrel connectors with your gate valve in between each one in between the barrels so that'll allow you uh, to shut the barrels on and off for maintenance um, and then on the inside you're gonna have um, you're either gonna do a single filter cage or a double depending on the flow so mine's gonna be a pump fed so I'm doing a double filter cage on them for higher flow or if you're doing just a gravity fed system, you probably only want to do a single filter. So basically on the inside, on the inlet side, there's going to be a 90 facing down on the first barrel. And on the inlet side of the second barrel, there's going to be a 90 facing down. And on the inlet side, this is the moving barrel, there's going to be an inlet or a 90 facing up. So the ones facing down is going to cause less water turbulence because this is your static beds. You don't want a whole lot of turbulence in the media. And then on your third barrel, it's facing up because this is where your constant air stone is going to be, which you're going to have a turbulent um, flow of media. So with the, the 90 facing up, it'll just provide more uh, flow current in the water. So on the outlet side that's where you're going to put your filter cages so what i have is there's going to be a t and then joined on the t is a 90 like that and then you'll measure You'll measure the distance up to almost the top of the barrel for the, the filter cage stems and then you're going to drill holes through those uh, filter cages about seven inches down. That's for the water to come flow back into. You don't want to drill those holes big enough for your media to get stuck into. Um, so the water will flow back down those into the next um, barrel and continue so on and so forth until you get to the very last barrel which I'm still waiting still waiting for my uniseal and then that's going to be the one that just flows outward to return to your pond so I'll show you back in here so I got the 90 facing down and then I got the T and a 90 facing up so I'm going to install um, three inch pipe up drill holes through them and then that'll be for the internal plumbing and then the next step will be to add the air air lines into these tubes um, for maintenance and for your moving bed so I'll show you that next so that's it for now let me get to the next part 
All right, guys. So now I got all the uh, pipes connected for the waste. Um, all the barrels set up. Um, so now I'm going to work on the uh, air, the air uh, lines next. So that's going to use one half inch PVC pipe. So I've got myself my half inch pipe connector. So I've drilled a hole in the base. So that's going to get inserted into there. And then I'm going to insert a half inch pipe that goes eh, about three quarters of the way. So this is my moving bed. This is the, the very last um, barrel in line. So this is going to be the moving bed. So this one you want to do a half inch pipe about three quarters of the way. Um, you're going to put an end cap on it so that the air just doesn't come out the end. And then you're going to drill a bunch of holes in that pipe to allow the air to evenly distribute through the whole butt barrel. So um, you may want to put the pipe in like a bathtub with an air line hooked up to it and start adding holes and then once you're satisfied with how much air is coming out that'll be enough holes. Um, so the other two barrels, they're going to be static so they don't need a pipe like that. So they're just uh, you're going to use those for when you're um, cleaning the barrels. So those, the pipes, only need to go about halfway. So they're in the center with no cap. So all the air will just come out. And it's more there just to agitate the media inside and flush, you know, get the dirt flushed through them. So you'll tie, you'll put half a half inch pipe into here. Same with the barrel number one. And then um, I'm going to come out with a 90 degree, um, basically the same as this. I'm just going to come out with a 90. Um, this one will come into a T. Obviously the first one will come into a 90. And then this one will come into a T. And then this will continue off to my air pump. So um, you want to make sure that your air pump is going to be sitting above water level. Because um, if not, you could get a, a back siphon into your air pump, and you don't want that. So if your air pump is going to sit somewhere below um, the water line of these uh, tubs, you'll want to make sure to put a, uh, a check valve so that you don't get water flowing into your air pump. Because that's probably not good for your air pump. So, all right. So I'm going to get those put together, and uh, see you back in the next clip. Hey guys, all right, so I'm down to my final step. I'm making the filter cages. Um, so basically what you want to do is you want to cut a length of pipe that's going to go from the 90s and the T's all the way up till about two inches from the top. Cut all those and then you'll just want to drill a bunch of holes in them. Make sure the holes are smaller than your media. Um, so start at the pipe an inch from the top and then just drill a whole bunch of holes about eh, seven inches um, in depth and uh, it's it's uh, easy if you have a sharp drill blade and the drill blade is long enough to go all the way through because then you can basically drill two holes at once going start here all the way through and just keep turning the pipe and going 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 until you have holes all the way around and then once you're done You'll insert it in. Um, I wouldn't solve it, weld any of the internal piping just so that you can uh, remove it for cleaning and maintenance. Um, so yeah, so that's basically what it'll look like when it's done. So I got five more pipes to drill holes in. So let me do it. Zippy fast. How's it going guys? I'm Zippy back. So I am doing a uh, leak test on my MK2 filter. So I just have it set up here on the patio. Um, mainly just looking for leaks in the uni seals and the shower um, bases. So yeah, it's gonna be hard to tell if the showers are leaking because I can't see under there. 
but I have them filling up. So I got my hose running. So that's going from that barrel to this barrel. And then into this barrel. So I'm almost filled up. So probably another three or four minutes and I'll be completely full. So anyways, that's what I'm doing right now. So I'll probably let them sit here overnight and uh, come out tomorrow morning and see, uh, <laughs> see what kind of a mess I have on the ground. But I do see a few leaks, but those are from because I haven't solvent welded the connections yet. So once I solvent weld the connections, that'll stop those leaks. So anyways, that is the filter. Can't wait to get it up and running on the actual pond. See you in the next clip. Good morning, guys. How's it going? Hope your day's going well. Um, so today, I'm going to move the MK2 filter into the filter shed and get it all hooked up, solvent welded. Um, through my water test, I think really the only leaks I was showing was through the connections that haven't been solvent welded. So I think once I get everything solvent welded, I should be good. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to get these moved and over to the filter house so let's go take a peek in there see how it's going all right still need to get a latch for this door i'll get around to that <clears throat> all right so i have been uh getting a roof installed on here i just got a little bit more to work on um but i think for the most part um yeah i'm ready to set this thing up so yesterday evening i connected the sieve filter to the bottom drain so i had to put in some wood down there because the bottom drain pipe was slightly pointing down towards the ground and to make that union connection you kind of have to get a nice level connection so i did have to lift that pipe up a little bit so there is some stress on the pipe so i hope it's fine i hope it won't break over time that would really suck because that would not be a fun repair there's no room in there to work um Anyways, so I got that connected to the sieve, got my pipes coming out, so now I have, uh, <laughs> this is my little, my little connection guide here that shows all my different fittings from the sieve, my fittings, to the barrel filters, coming out of the barrel filters, and then to the return, so the pond is right here, so that's what I'm going to follow. So let me get the MK2 barrels moved in here and we'll get them hooked up. So I'll get back with you guys in the next clip. All right, I got the uh, barrels moved into the filter shed. So I got all my pipe work here. Uh, got my different solvent welds. So it looks like first step, I need to raise that pipe up to that height so that will connect together um, I originally was going to put a union in right here but since this has a strap that I can disconnect I'll just save a union um, from right there in the plumbing so all right so let me uh, let me get the get these uh, connected up all right guys how's it going uh, here we are in the filter shed. Um, I did get the, uh, the barrel filters connected, um, all welded together, and I actually have water running through them right now. Um, 
So here's what they look like when they're almost done. Um, I don't have power yet to the shed, so I'm only able to run a few things at a time. So right now I'm just running the uh, pump for this filter system. And uh, so I still need to install the air pump. This is uh, barrel number three. This is gonna be the moving bed. So I haven't attached the air pump to it yet. So I'll do another video when everything's complete, complete. But I just wanted to get this video completed just to show you everything. Um, so let's see here. Uh, I did have some small leaks from the bottom. So what I ended up doing, I don't know if you can see inside there, but I put a uh, little plastic tray. Um, it's like weird. It's like I have a super, 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 super slow drip coming from somewhere, but so the plastic tray will catch the water. And if that thing ever fills up with water, I'll just put a little air tube line into it and suck it out. So I put one of those underneath all three of the barrels. Um, so I did get to test, <coughs> excuse me, I did get to test draining the system. Um, that's one of the, the tubes right there that connects. So um, eventually later I'll get it hooked up all permanently. But right now I'm still just kind of figuring things out as I go. So anyways. Um, the other problem I'm having is the water level in the sieve like runs super low even with the pump only running at 30% so I'm getting a lot of air that's getting sucked into here which is causing the K1 media in here to rise um, so I still need to get some type of uh, floss to put inside of the tubes so these are kind of falling in so I just kind of fish them out but yeah so I got to pick up some filter floss so that the K1 doesn't fall in there um, and then I'll have to figure out a solution for the sieve filter so I don't get as much air so this is the sec barrel filter number two this one receives no air so that one's working as it should so yeah so that is the uh the barrel three barrel filter mk2 system um if you want to get the plans to how to build these uh righty sells these on his website i'll put a link down in the description and uh yeah this is my return really quick so i got a union on there got the check valve and then that goes to the return, which this T section here did not work. I guess it goes up too high and there's not enough force behind it to get the water to flow out of the tube. So, eh, I'm sure I'll come up with a fix in the future. But anyways, uh, yeah, here's how it connects from the sieve. Got that up, got the check valve, everything's good. So, yep, there you have it. So, um, I guess I'll catch you guys on the next video where I'll show you how I built my backy shower. I got one or two more things to complete that video. And then I'll show you also the video um, putting in the box weld liner. Um, so, yeah, I'll get those videos out as soon as I can. And I still got a lot more stuff, details of finishing this off. But, so coming along guys so zippy does it zippy built a pond zippy builds his diy filter so thanks for tuning in hope you guys enjoyed have a good one and i'll see you on the next video zippy out